Hello. One second. Can everybody hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, Yusuf. Fatima, how are you? I'm very Thank well. You. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Just give me one second. Okay, uh, so, hi Musa, how are you? Did you get my message, Musa? Hi Yusuf, good afternoon. Yeah, I just saw it now. Oh, okay. Uh, so, right, so we're waiting for, how was the CFA, by the way? How was the CFA competition? Is it, is it yeah. finished now? Yeah, we are waiting the results. Oh, we are waiting, the, oh, okay, so we have to, how long did that take? The result and it was fun actually. I think it oh, was very intense. Everybody is kind of ready mm. for the stuff. Really to the but topic. did they do all the well? How, how did it go? Yeah, it went well. Our guys did very well. Very well. Ah, that's that's what I want to hear. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, we get to this time. <laughs> yeah, look, man, did a very great job there. Sweet. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. Okay. Uh right. Okay. So uh should we wait just for one, two minutes before we start the program? Just for these guys that are waiting for the results. Uh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just text them again that they need to not start. Okay. All right. Okay. Hi, Dr. Jumi. I see you've already sent the message to the uh, to the group. Fatima, I'm still coming because I just before I before I introduce you, I want uh, us to have fully started. Sorry for the little bit of delay. No, not a problem at all. I understand. It's fine. Yeah, no. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Boop, boop, boop. Just wait a minute or two for these guys. And then we can start. Mm. 
Okay. Okay. Hi, Abib. Welcome. Miss Sarah, welcome. It's been a while. How are you doing? Hi, Yusuf. Hi, everyone. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm doing well. Hope you all are doing well. Ah, uh, not bad, not bad, not bad. We are pushing it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm guessing we're waiting for our guest speaker. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we, we just because um, we just finished the CFA competition, right? So we're just waiting for them to just give them one or two minutes for them to come into the session. Or uh, we'll start now. Okay. <laughs> Khalid, welcome. I can see you're already making <laughs> you're already doing your, your job in the in the session. Mr. Ridwan, welcome. Thank you. That's a Good afternoon. Look at you. Um, we'll start <laughs> uh, How is everyone doing? Hope you guys are doing great. All right. Um, I think right. Let's just start now, cause uh, so others can join us later. This is a session I've been looking forward to. Let's start. Okay, so welcome. Can everyone, can you see my face? I'm not sure. Sweet. No background. Anyway, <laughs> so welcome everyone. Uh, it's been a while since we had a session and I've been looking forward to this one. I'm glad we are finally here. We finally, we finally have Ms. Fatima Bamishenu to speak to us today, which is great. Uh, having this kind of, you know, big people to come speak with us, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a nice one. Uh, so we can learn from them, uh, just as we learned from everyone that has spoken to us uh, so far. So thank you for coming, Ms. Bami Fatima. I'll let you uh, introduce yourself. Uh, and I'll read your bow as well. So introduce yourself. If you do justice to the introduction, I'll say, okay, that's fine. We'll start with the program. If not, I'll read your full bow and people can know that, okay, this is who we are speaking, we are having today. So um, welcome again, everyone, uh, to this session. And we have officially started the session. So hi, Ms. Fami uh, hi, Ms. Fatima. It's been a while. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. And you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay, so my name is Fatima Bamishedu. Uh, I feel threatened that Yusuf said that if I don't do justice to <laughs> introducing myself, he's going to read out my bio. Maybe we should just let him do that. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> my name is Fatima Bamishedu. I'm an all rounder multi-potentialite and polymath. I have experience buying from strategy, audit, organization, development, operational strategy. I also am engaged with um, social impact. Currently, I'm the vice director of the Global Shippers community. I used to be a mentor for 30 Lamps Initiative. I've also been a mentor for She Innovators. And this is, this is, I'm really excited to be part of uh, the Topia uh, mentorship, mentoring program. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's been amazing engaging with Yusuf and 
getting to this journey so far. So yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much. That was uh, that was good, but not good enough. So I'm still going to read it anyway. <laughs> thank you. So, so we have here Fatima, Fatima Bamshedu. Uh, so Fatima Bamshedu is an ecosystem catalyst and strategic utility player. She has garnered experience over seven years. Uh, she has vast experience in corporate and operation strategy, organizational, uh, organizational development, and IT enablement. She used to work at KPMG. She was a KPMG consultant. Her experience spans over uh, various uh, sectors in the energy sector, consumer markets, and uh, not-for-profit sectors as well. Uh, she worked on a major transformation project that positioned an indigenous business uh, competes with global brands for market share. Uh, she was selected uh, as a KPMG Courageous Champion. Well done. <laughs> to foster collaboration and an inclusive workplace, uh, which is great to see. Uh, she's Fatima is the vice curator of the World Economic Forum, uh, the Global Shapers Community Lagos of. She was elected the position to the position in March uh, 2021 and sworn in office into the office in July 2021. Uh, she leads the Lagos chapter of a global network of young and inspiring individuals, successful in her chosen career and businesses, and contributing to impact projects uh, that directly improve their community. Uh, she is a polymath, philanthropist, and entrepreneur. She sits on the advisory board for two companies. One is an NGO and another one is UK-based uh, startup. She's a published author of the book, Most Cells of Stardust, uh, a recipient of Funto Babatola uh, Mentoring Award uh, for her contributions to mentoring the girl child. She also presented an award to the Governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Fashola, at the Youth Stakeholders Forum, as one of the best graduating students of Ignite Employability and Enterprise Project. She's the founder of Ultra Life Boost, a consultancy focused on helping young individuals reach their talent uh, potential and tackle unplanned quarter life crisis uh, towards social fulfillment and prosperity at retirement. So, what I can see from this thing that I've just read, this guy that I've just read, is that you've put a lot of it effort in improving lives, in helping people, you know, the girl child, and you've got a lot of awards and you've contributed a lot to mentoring as well, which is why it is really important that, you know, we recognize this um, award, this achievement, because, you know, a lot of these days, what we see in this, uh, these days is that people don't um, recognize this achievement. People don't recognize people that impact people's lives uh, as much as, you know, other you know entertainment and the the other likes so it's really important that was why i read your but it's really important to recognize and you know to just let people know what you have been able to achieve which is great and you will talk about what you do with the world economic forum with yourself eventually but you know i just feel it is really nice for you to be on this uh, to come and talk to us about how we can now leverage all because obviously with all you've achieved you know you've had a lot of challenges considering you're a lady as well you know uh, we want to say we want to say you know the world is not gender bad but it is actually so you know considering the fact that you're a lady you've had a lot of challenges and now you want to talk to us about leveraging all the challenges that you face, how can you leverage it into 360 uh, success, which is why you're here today. So thank you very much for coming and uh, you can go ahead with your uh, presentation. Uh, we can hear you, Fatih. Thank you so much, Yusuf. Sorry, I was no. muted. I said, I'm reading the comments and I'm laughing. <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're, very, you're very right from the point of view that, yes, it's been tough, you know, doing all of these things. And honestly, that's how human beings are. We do not really appreciate and celebrate all of these achievements. I even feel like I haven't scratched the surface yet. But, you know, it's been tough getting to where I am today. It's been tough the entire journey. And I know that there are so many people out there that are experiencing the same thing. And, you know, I think that 
this kind of session that we're going to have is going to be a session where we can leverage um we can, I can learn from you you can also learn from me and we can yeah. leverage our own different perspectives to come up with solutions that can really help us um leverage our challenges for all round and 360 degrees success thank you i have a presentation i'd like to share my screen I'm trying to share my screen. Okay. Yeah, try now. Okay. <laughs> Rachel said, please open your video. We want to see only for this five days. Okay, okay. <laughs> you guys should chase me away, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I think that are you sharing your screen now? Is it yes, working? I am. Okay, great. I am. Okay. All right. Can we see our screen? Uh, Can anyone see? No? Okay, let me stop sharing. And, uh, okay, yeah, I can see it. All right, awesome. great. Awesome. All right. So really, this is going to be a very interactive session. I want it to be as engaging as possible. So I'm going to start off asking, um, when we say challenges, what's what are challenges? And I'd really like to hear from your perspectives. You know, what's what's what is the thing that keeps you up at night? Anyone feel free to share. You can imagine. Anyone? Uh, want this to be like anyone with five call names? <laughs> no, don't put anybody on that spot. <laughs> I know that everybody has challenges. Apart from money, please. Nobody should come here and say that money is a challenge because money is everybody's challenge. So please. <laughs> what are the other challenges that we are facing? What else keeps us up at night? <clears throat> yes. Um, can I can I go? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Fatima. You're welcome to to this session. And, Hi, um, I can I, I can not wait to to get all the knowledge from this session. <laughs> so, so first of all, I'm starting with what keeps me up at night. Uh, my daughter. So now she doesn't allow me to. <laughs> but but okay. uh, speaking to challenges, yeah. Uh, so I like to see challenges as you know um, short term. I like to see them as short term issues, right? Short term um, concerns or shortcomings. I don't like to see them as things that are long term because uh, there are challenges today and they can be overcome. They are not things that are permanent. Uh, so here yeah, they are the delay or uh, minimize the minimize my chances of success in the short term, but that things that we can also work on and then at the end of the day you will achieve your outcome. So I like to see challenges as things that are short term. I like, I like to take them, take them on and then um, try to look for strategies to overcome those challenges. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for that contribution, Ridwan. Thank you. Anyone else want to share what their challenge is? What keeps me up at night is the fear of not being able to reach my full potential, given the realities of the country we find ourselves to be. Thank you. That's Thank it. you so much. Thank you, Abukhalid. Anyone else want to share? One more person till we get into it. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello, Fatima. So uh, Hi, I see. 
Another challenge is um, access to opportunities. So um, for instance, um, let's say for the global, I'm just using it as an example. Let's say for the global shippers um, community, like if one is not a part of that community, probably there might be some benefits that one might not be able to access, like such as going to the World Economic Forum and um, engaging with certain kinds of networks. So I think that's a challenge that I, I, I and other young people get to experience in like being better versions of ourselves. Maybe we see these opportunities or apply to them and for some reason we don't like get to be a part of the network or the the way to assess these opportunities are they're quite like close-ended maybe based on a referral basis is not something so open to the public so i think mm -hmm. that that poses as a challenge to persons to people thank you sarah yeah, okay all right. So, okay, another person who's in the chat, sometimes decision making is a challenge. Challenges are not fixed. It is relative to time, place, and persons too. Yes. I'm really glad that everybody has shared their own, okay, most people have shared what their perception of challenges are. What I picked is that challenges are short term, you know, you have to develop strategies to address and tackle them. Um, some people have the fear of reaching their potential. Some other people have the fear of access to opportunities. Very major challenge that we all face every single day. As soon as we wake up is decision making. And yes, they are always tight. Challenges are always tight, either people, places, persons or different situations and all of these things are true however there's something i want to tell you about challenges challenges are the stepping stones to success i know you've heard this so many times and then it sounds cliche but that's just the truth they are the stepping stones to success and i'll explain typically if somebody had um life so smoothly maybe the person was born into wealth person never has a health issue you know person doesn't have any any form of challenge anything that it does, doesn't have to think somebody is paid to think for them you know that person how would you think when when they are calling people that are successful do you think that person would have earned their strides enough to say that yes they are actually very successful do you think so? I think that the learning comes in the doing. I think that clarity comes in the doing. I think that, you know, there are a lot of things that we can learn within a period of pain, period of confusion, right? In developing the right strategies to be able to overcome whatever challenges that we're facing right now. I believe that in that process they are defining things that would shape your character they are defining things that will determine the cause of your life there are things that you would see that would also be very much revealing to you about your destiny your purpose and then the people around you what you should not be doing and what you should be doing so although we have all these different perceptions of challenges, I'd like us to start by changing our mindsets towards challenges. Like the topic says, you want to leverage your challenges for 360 success. So why not change the mindsets that challenges are not all oh, problem, oh issue, you know, any of those things. What, what if we took challenge? What if we're excited about challenges? Because this is what would help us get to, you know, where we're going. Somebody mentioned, you know, having the right access to opportunities, for instance. If you do not have the right access to opportunities and then you're in your house, you're not doing anything about that. You're not building networks. You're not, you've, or you've established networks. You're not following up on those networks. You're not engaging. 
and you're not putting out value. You're not putting, you're not just only not putting out value, you're also not, you know, putting yourself in a position to receive value. Some of those things can be a hindrance to accessing the right opportunities. I'll give you an instance. So I don't know, and I'm going to recommend uh, Netflix. Does everybody have Netflix or has somebody else's password to Netflix here? Anyone? Please, you can raise your hands. Let me see. Just raise. If you have access to Netflix, please just raise your hand so that I would know what I'm recommending. Yeah. Everybody, I will assume everybody has them. Yeah. And if you do not have, please reach out to me soon. Really. <laughs> Come and share my password. Sister Jumi, <laughs> Jumi, they will share their passwords with you. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, um, there's this documentary on about Michael Jordan. And I think it's very important for most people to watch that documentary. It's long. Yeah, at some point, it can be a bit confusing if you're not really paying attention. But I mm. recommend that you know we kind of like watch that documentary and see how somebody who is expected to be who who is known to be you know the best. I mean, so many there were when I was younger, there were so many um, merchandise that they say, oh, like Mike do this, you know, X, Y, Z, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, for people that are basketball fans, even if you're not a basketball fan, you still know who Michael Jordan is. But watching that documentary kind of like tells you a bit about his journey and it's kind of very much relatable. Some people might not aspire to greatness as much as he does in the sense that, you know, they might be thinking, ah, Please, I didn't come to this life to come and stress myself. I can't keep myself, you know. Mm -hmm. But then, even within the little that you want to do, the little that you want to do, if you're not obsessed, if you do not go literally crazy about X, Y, Z, whatever your goal or your plan is, then it becomes a challenge for you to actually measure up to success. You would see how he used his situation. You will see how we use stones that were thrown at him as building blocks to achieving the success that you know he was able to achieve at the end of the day. And and for me, that is that that's really um, amazing. That's a good thing, you know. So I would say that um, we we'll get right into it, but I want all of us to have a different mindset to challenges and welcome them not as problems but as opportunities for us to achieve success okay can everyone see this Can we see this? Can you see the next slide? It talks about can you decode or tell a story? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. You know, I mentioned that this is going to be an interactive session. So if we can just study this for about a minute and then, you know, someone can just tell us what they think or you know kind of like decode it or tell a story i decided to start with problem solving because we really need to have a different mindset to um problems and challenges and how we can leverage them
Sorry, I didn't get the last part. Okay, I'm saying that we just need to look at it and then we just somebody, one person or two people can okay. come up and share what they think about what this is saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. I'll tell the story. Okay, I think we've looked at it. Can anyone tell a story? Anyone? Okay, at first thought, first glance, what does it what does it look like? What does it mean? What are you seeing? So instead of putting you under the spot of telling a full story or what you can decode, let's just start with what can you see here? Uh, can I speak? Huh? Yes, please. Um, the first one, if you are referring to where we have some three people, it looks as if they are athletes. And uh, one has come first, the one in the middle, then the one on number two, second, and the one uh, in the blue, third. Okay. That's the only thing I can see for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Prof. Anyone else? I think the other one is probably right. First one is time management. Uh, second one uh, is more about insights. Oh, uh, yeah, insights. The uh, next one is it's like a puzzle, so problem solving or something like that. And then the next one is uh, a chat. And the other one is a community. So it's uh, five routes. Five routes. So. Mm. Okay. Thank you. That's an interesting one. Thank you. Okay. I also read in the chat where Sis Jumi said she, she noticed their expressions as well for the athletes. Okay. And the last one. Anyone? Just tell tell me what you can see. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so I feel the last one to me it feels like different and um, different levels of feel to success. It's just me thinking. So if you take the 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 red one, ninety percent probably you get your tend to have 90 percent success rate so that's just why I feel well yeah, yeah that's why I put it from the last picture okay thank you thank you so much all right so I've heard everybody's comments and most of it is true so this is what I'm going to do I'm just going to try as much as possible to tell a story with these pictorial um, diagrams that are here. So yes, Prof was right, these are athletes. Yusuf was right, there are different ways from time management to community. And also since Jimmy was right with you know, different portions and levels for success. However, this is the story. <clears throat> these three athletes, I'm glad that since Jumi picked their expressions, these three athletes, number one, number two, number three. 
all of them went into the competition. This competition maybe is called life. They went into the competition and number one is the one that won. Number two, who did not win does not really even have, who did not win first position does not really have such an exciting, you know, demeanor and yeah. character. And then you see number three is completely beat down. Completely beat down. But guess what? Do you know that all these three people are winners? I mean, they are first three. What now wants to happen to number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10, and people that didn't even make it into the race? Or the people that started the race but had a leg sprain or probably passed away? What, what would we say about all of these people? Now, I would explain from number one's perspective the kind of challenges that number one would be having despite being the winner. Number one, we start having challenges such as, oh, I need to have media rounds. I need to have press release. Everywhere I go now, people would see that, oh, I'm now the one that won. Maybe I used to eat gala and coke on the streets. I'm not eating gala and coke on the streets again. Now I need to be going to maybe Chicken Republic to be eating my meals. There's a lifestyle change their expectations, and it probably needs to make an appearance. Number two, we'd we'll be looking at number one and be thinking, oh, uh, probably number one has everything, maybe he has more money, I don't have, maybe the, the prize money was 50,000 pounds, and then he only has 25,000 pounds. He's not thinking about what number three would even be facing. He probably also has all those challenges of being, oh, he took second place. Meanwhile, number three is like, oh, I can't believe I took third place, blah, 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 blah. They don't realize that when they're announcing the winners, they are going to call first place, second place, and third place. Their body language even depicts, you know, the kind of mood and behavior in which they are in. This is to tell you that one, Every other, every other person at different stages of their life, they all have their own challenges. The person that you are looking at at the peak period has their own challenges that even if it was given to you at that point, you probably would not be able to manage it. For instance, we're seeing what is happening in Ukraine and Russia. That's the president of the whole country. Looking at how Volodymyr is doing you know, coming out, he's not even wearing his suit anymore. He's now in his army, um, um, army suits, army, army vests and everything. Those are challenges that they are facing. They have to go to press conferences. They have to review, this is conflict. And then you're also looking at it from the point of view that, okay, uh, maybe you also have a mini argument with your neighbor at home. And then you're looking at how you're going to resolve that. It's the same thing. It's just the scale that is different. Everybody has their own challenges at different levels of life. Now, speaking about body language, I want us to be able to look at ourselves and say, you know, I am going to carry myself like this, like number one, the winner. Do you know why? Our body tends to react to different things that you know, is always on our mind. The way we carry ourselves, our body will react to it. If you carry yourself like number three, slouch, sad, thinking about all your problems, yes, they would actually weigh your shoulders down. And then even if you are running to become number one, you cannot even get to number one because of the burden you are carrying. So you can only be at number three. You are carrying yourself like number two. Mm, well neither here or there, then you'd always be in the middle. That's the story about the athletes. Now, we're going to the story around these different parts. There are so many parts to success. Some people, they know how to manage their time effectively. After all, they say that time is money. 
Some people, all they need is to have one brilliant idea and then they can set the world in place. Some people have the right strategy. They don't have good time management. They don't have any special idea or anything, but they always know how to get around, you know, they, are, they always know how to get their way around many things. They know how to play chess <laughs> in life. Some people know how to talk. That's how they win and persuade people. Some people, they are backed up by their community. They are backed up by people. Yoruba would say, in your last show, me, or something like that. You know, That means that people are the, are the, are the, are the beautiful clothes that I'm wearing. People also have things like that. A lot of politicians, they have people that back backing them and saying that, oh, you know what, we are behind this person. We're going to root for this person. And that is how they also tell their own success story. Now, for the portions and percentage below, if we're giving these four portions without percentage and everything that is there, and we're asked, oh, okay, just take one and then, you know, you you succeed in life. Many people will go for their favorite color. Oh, I like purple. I like green. Mm, it's not much, but I'll take it. I like uh, uh, blue. I like orange. This one, that one. They'll just take whatever suits them. But you know what? At every different point in time, every stage of your life, each of these different portions, they are very, very necessary. There is a time when you're high. There's a time when you are low. You cannot always be 90% all the time. So it is very important for you, for you to give yourself that break. There is a time when you take, oh, just a sip, 10%. And then there's a time you need an additional, you take it 20% more. And there's a time you need 60%. And then there's a time you need to be on 100 or 90%. So combining all of this together, we see that everybody has different things that they use for success. Everybody has different ways that they manage themselves. It doesn't mean that they do not know what their challenges are. It doesn't mean that they only leverage their own strengths to be able to you know, win at life, but they just have something that they use. And that's what we're going to look into. Typically, this is what success is. Everybody thinks, oh, you are small today, Tomorrow we grow the right amount of sunlight, chlorophyll, water, everything, and then we grow into this big, you know, beautiful tree that is here, beautiful plant that is here. But that's not always the case. It's not always the case. This is a case of what we ordered, but in actual sense, this is what we got. <laughs> oh, we got. <laughs> yeah, this is what we got. We thought it was going to be linear and progressive. But no, mm. life is just an interesting uphill battle. And yeah. then you have to wait up, you know, there's a stop one. You go round, 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 then stop two. And then you think that, oh, you have already reached the limits that you are there. And you even realize some, in some cases that where you were in stop one was higher than where you are now in stop two. But then to now get to step two, to step three, you need to move back up. You need to move in a way that you gather more momentum. It might take you a bit longer. It might take you shorter, but you just have to move. And then at level three, you're now thinking, okay, um, is this where I stop? Oh, perhaps you're looking at another person's life and saying, ah, maybe I need to get to level four. Or you are challenging yourself and your own goal to say, ah, I need to get to level five or level six or whatever that definition of success is for you. Understanding that life is a journey that is non-linear is very, very key. And there is one thing that I always fear. There's something that I'm always afraid of. My own fear is at every low point in my life, not being able to learn the lesson that that low point is meant to teach me is a serious fear that I have. A very, very serious fear. If I have a challenge today, let's say my phone, God forbid, I can't even use that as an example because my phone cannot break. <laughs> Let me use another example. 
Um, yeah, let's say, let's say, you know, I lose my, my ATM card, for instance, you know, what does that teach me? If I do not find my ATM and I'm unable to have access to money or whatever at any point in time, does it teach me to have emergency savings? Does it teach me to leverage creative ways in which I can survive without being stranded? Am I learning all of that or am I just in a hurry, block the ATM, tell the bank to do this, request for another ATM, X, Y, Z? The learning comes in the doing, in the process. What are you learning? What is your survival skill? That's my own challenge. So this is what we thought we ordered. This is what we thought. This is the actual thing. This is what we actually got. Now, okay, somebody has a comment. Okay, learning from your low point, yes. Okay, so in life, when you have different problems, you need to learn how to compartmentalize. Compartmentalizing is a skill that I see that most men, as compared to women, have in the sense that when you know a man can be on his last 500 naira, you know, and he will still go and watch football, he will still go and drink beer, he will still make that, he will, he will still enjoy himself. But then women sometimes, you know, we we tend to make the burden of oh it's just this 500 i have and then we kind of like disconnect and do not allow ourselves to enjoy all the other things in life i don't know maybe it's the way that we have been created or i don't know maybe like a life skill that we all just need to learn and learn and then i've also seen some women that also are very good at compartmentalizing compartmental to say you know what problem does not finish i'm going to enjoy myself that's 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 the motto that's the goal so what does compartmentalizing mean it means that oh if the issue is coming from work you're taking work issues and dealing with it square on you're not taking work issues and then letting it affect other areas of your life now if the issue is with finances you're not taking the issue of your finances as a means to say okay you know what because i don't have um xyz um funds or means or xyz it does not mean that i'm not going to you know push myself to do other things it does not mean that i would not maybe go into debt for instance and i'm saying that because most entrepreneurs most leaders that we see today they always use debt as a tool i'm sure you've heard rich people don't use their own money they don't use their own um liquid cash to do things they capitalize on debt and then use debt to facilitate quite a number of things that they want to do and then the returns of that they used to pay off and offset the debt and then also get profits and then that is how they built and you know we use wealth i'm sure we have finance people in the house um that can um <laughs> that can shed more light on that big one yusuf i'm very sure that you can speak more into how people are able to use debt to 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 deal with their problems now that's that's about compartmentalizing you have to take it like okay this is life problem this is health problem this is this, this, this. that does not mean that one aspect cannot affect the rest it doesn't mean so what it simply means is that you are controlling your own inner ecosystem and ensuring that you are able to deal with issues um, head on. The problem with carrying everything on your head and saying, oh, um, this thing, the way it is, I'm not just going to allow um, myself to do anything. I'm not going to compartmentalize it. There's this bad apple that you know that is bad. You don't want to cut off the bad parts. You don't want to separate it. After some time, it's going to seem to disturb you know, the freshness or, or the, 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 the state of all the other apples and eventually infect 
it's going to act like a sore wound that is going to infect other areas and you do not want that that is why it is very very important to compartmentalize now when you're going through difficulties in life it is very very important to document why do i say this if i have um if if i'm at if i'm at the hospital for instance and i'm having a headache and I go to the hospital and the doctor wants to run a check. And then the doctor is asking me, oh, at what time did this start? And you're answering, I don't know. I don't know where, when it started. So just there. Do you think that the doctor will be able to prescribe the right medicine to you if you're not keeping track and documenting? But imagine somebody that goes to the doctor and says, oh, um, doctor, this headache started yesterday. Started yesterday at around 5 p.m. right after I came down from um, a meeting and the meeting was intense, X, Y, Z. Immediately after I noticed that I had a headache, I took 500 milligrams of paracetamol and then I went to sleep. I took one liter of water, X, Y, Z. Do you should think that at the end of the day, by the time that person is relating this message to the doctor, the doctor would have an informed perspective about how to help the person solve their problem. It would definitely have an informed perspective. Now, not only would this benefit the doctor, it will also benefit the person, such that when the person goes through similar issues later on in life, the person is able to refer, oh, it's true. When I had such and such issue, this is how I dealt with it. When the person goes through another type of issue in life, say, okay, maybe, um, today, I only have 15 naira, and this is how I spent my 15 naira. I bought pepper, this, 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 that, and I was able to eat with it. When the person has 500 naira, the person will remember that, oh, when I had 15 naira, I did X, Y, Z with it, up to the extent that now I've already I've been able to build myself to the point where I have 500 naira. Maybe I started the business with 17,000, and now I have over 70 billion in my account this and this and this and this is what i need to get them very very important to document now you have to challenge and compete is, is everyone with me can, can you still hear me okay yes yeah sure I can hear you oh, okay so we need to be able to challenge and compete when we say challenge you're not just challenging yourself you're not just competing with other people. You're also competing with yourself. I used to have a friend in school that we used to have this motto together whenever we have exams and all of these things. You see, I'm competing with the um, best version of myself. I'm competing with the last version of myself. And that leaves room for improvement. It doesn't mean that when you see what other people are doing, you cannot take a cue from it and say, oh, okay, um, this person actually has done something that I want to be able to do, has done something that I want to achieve. It doesn't mean that you are now competing with that person that to say, oh, I must be the first, I must be the last, because you have, you have like different journeys. You are different. You have like different journeys in life. You are not on the same level. You don't know when the person is going to leave the face of this earth. Neither do you know when you're going to leave. So you cannot go on, uh, a long journey to say, oh, you are competing, competing, competing with other people because they are on different journeys other than yours. You might see things that might interest you based on one person's journey. And, you know, that might be, that might be something that, you know, might, might inspire you or you might admire and you might want to take one or two learnings from it. But the real challenge is with yourself. How are you able to interact personally have a conversation with yourself and say you know what this thing you did it last year or since we are in q q1 hmm? and the third month of q1 you're saying this thing i said i was going to do it last year i still haven't done it i'm challenging myself to be able to do this i'm challenging myself to complete this in three weeks in two months and then you can now then say that yes, you have you have seen progress. After challenging and competing with yourself, you need to learn and apply. What does learning mean? Learning is not just oh, 
they said that there is a course on Coursera, data science, or artificial intelligence. I want to go and learn it. Now I have the certificate and I'm keeping it. No. Learning does not mean, oh, okay, uh, I've, I've, I've come to listen to this conversation today and I've learned a few things. But all the old beliefs that I had before, I'm not going to unlearn them. I'm still going to hold on to it. I'm still going to keep it because I don't want somebody else to influence my mind. That's not learning. Learning is going to get that Coursera certificate. Learning through the process of what it is and then applying it, no matter how small. So for instance, if you learn data science or whatever, and you've not yet gotten an opportunity to apply some of those skills and everything that you have learned, what can you do? Maybe you can start to monitor your own day-to-day -day, um, activities through data science or data analytics. By the time you get into an interview, and they ask you a question, maybe because the opportunity has not come for you to actually apply that in a big scale. You can tell them how you used your learning from data science and the specifically to improve your life. Do you know that a tech bro or tech sis can be in that room listening to you and then they'll call you rather than being an employee to come and be a co-founder of, of, of a tech startup? Because you have used it to improve your own life. It's working for you. Someone trying to say something? Okay. You know, they can call you to come in and say, um, ah, this thing that you have done is so great because people are looking for solutions you need to be able to apply what you've learned you need to be able to say okay i've done this from the little that i've learned then you another way is on learning when you learn new stuff my angela will tell you when you know better do better when you learn new stuff you do not just keep on to your old beliefs obviously you have to evaluate and see um, the reasonability of what you have learned and see how well it fits into um, your situation that's why deep and critical thinking is always important not just on your job or your business but also in your personal life because that is what will help you surmount your own challenges and will even make you a better problem solver when you face other challenges at work or business so being able to evaluate, okay, these skills that I've learned now compared to what I've learned before, nothing stops you from drawing like a diagram and saying, this is what I thought it was, this is what it is now. And then drawing like a third column to say, okay, in this scenario, would this thing work? Answer yes or no. That's how you build your own personal strategy. That's how you build your own personal model to say, okay, well, this works in this situation, but this doesn't work in that situation. This works for me and is aligned with my beliefs, but this doesn't work for me and is not aligned with my own beliefs. That's how you learn. That's how you apply. That's how it stays with you. Now, you've compartmentalized. You've documented. You've challenged. You've 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 you've, 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 you've compete. You've compete. You've learned. You've applied. You are now ready to celebrate. Celebration is a very, very huge aspect of leveraging your challenges for 360 success. Celebrate your milestones. Oh, I wanted to finish reading this book. I've been having challenges with reading, but this year I want to read it, finish reading four books. What do you do? By the time you finish reading the book, you take yourself and go and buy ice cream. Or that's um, um, money that you promise yourself that you use to bet to say, ah, this guy, if you finish reading this book, I bet 5,000 on your head that you cannot finish reading the book. Bet on yourself. I challenge you today to bet on yourself, bet your own self. Do the work better yourself and celebrate yourself. I challenge you to do that. 
from the challenges that you are facing right now, from the issues that you're facing right now. That is how you build your own success. Somebody mentioned in the chat, I doubt. Could you please explain what you mean so that I can clarify? Musa Al Kazim Adam. Oh, so I was that when you were asking, is there anyone that wanted to talk when the this thing was shaking? So that was when I oh. said I doubt. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I challenge you to better yourself and celebrate yourself today, starting from today. Anything that you know that is pending, any challenge that you that you know that you know, is an issue for you, go and surmount it. Bet on yourself that ah, this guy, this madam, you can't do it. Okay, tell yourself, watch me, I'll do it. Go and do it, and you come back. That thing that I used to bet, and bet well. Don't bet with 15 naira or chicken public or pizza. Bet, like actual bets on yourself. Within your own capacity. In fact, go overboard. Go and do the thing and bet on yourself. With celebration, there are two different aspects. You either enjoy what you need to enjoy now, or you have some sort of delayed gratification. So cumulatively, you hit one milestone, two milestones, three milestones, up to 10 milestones, and then you tell yourself, okay, it's when I reach these 10 milestones that I'm going to get myself a bent. So every single milestone I'm achieving before the tenth milestone is progressively on to me buying that things that I need for myself. That I promise myself. Or you can say, oh, for every milestone that I've achieved, I'm buying ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. Maybe because that's what you love and it's rewarding. And then you have to know yourself. Self knowing yourself is very, very key. You have to know yourself. Am I the kind of person that likes delayed gratification? Man, the kind of person that likes, you know, immediate um, compensation for the work that I've done. You need to know yourself and apply. Like I said, in this situation, does delayed gratification work for me? Yes. In that situation, does it work for me? No. You also need to know yourself to ask yourself through applying to say, mm, if I keep buying ice cream for myself, will I be so aggressive in getting? you know the, the 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 kind of achievement that i want am i spoiling myself too much sometimes you need to be tough on yourself so that you can achieve your goals but the, the best time to be kind to yourself is doing your own challenges be kind be disciplined with yourself and make sure that you celebrate so moving on I'm sure that everybody has heard about the 80-20 rule. That's the Pareto principle that says that for many outcomes, roughly 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the causes. Meaning, if you're Yoruba, Yoruba will say something like, oh, isheke kere, ugunla, meaning small money, big rewards, small money, big rewards, small money, big rewards. Another person will say, oh, um, um, you, you do some, okay, I think I attended a seminar one time and the lady said, she was working in one organization, she said that if she had to, if she was given one hour to solve a problem, she would use 80% of the time to look for the solution to the problem and use 20% so she'll use 80% of the time to look for the solution to the problem and then use 20% to execute the problem. That's another angle to the 80-20 rule. She is saying that, oh, for that one hour, she's going to use 80% most of the time to look for the solution. And then she's going to use the remaining small time to execute. Some other people will say, oh, do the hard work of the 20% and then the 80% will come. You feed the birds and then you have a poultry. You sell the poultry, you sell, you sell the birds, you sell the, the eggs, 
you sell xyz and then all the returns will come to you this you actually need to apply in every aspect of your life as it as it relates as it's very very much important now the three d's i talked about one of them during my 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 presentation but these are the three d's that i live by discipline discernment and direction so I, i'd like to throw it to everyone um listening on what um do you think is the most important d in all these three days what do you think is or which one do you think should come first i'd like to hear from everyone number one discipline okay from this jumi I like to hear from everyone. Okay. Yusuf says direction. Nora says discipline. Mosa says discipline. Okay. More questions, more, more responses, please. Which of these three do you think is the first one that should come first? Sarah says discernment. Abdukhalid says direction. Direction. And Khadija. I would like to hear from everyone. Prof. Read one. like to hear from everyone okay i think we can move on so yeah i'm saying direction discernment discipline different different people think at least one should come first okay so let's settle it and i'll be asking questions please i want this to be an interactive session so please feel free to um unmute your mic and also speak um so now let, let me ask if you say discipline should be the first thing if you're disciplined towards something that is not the right direction for you that is not the right direction for you do you not feel like you would have wasted your time if you've been disciplined and working actively towards something, do you not feel like it would have been like a waste of time for those that chose discipline? What are your thoughts? I'm the quality is true. People of discipline are not saying anything. Can't hear anyone. Just speaking. For me, I chose discipline actually as the first because mm -hmm. I don't see it as a waste of time. For you to be able to work, like at least from it, you either gain something, you definitely gain experience for working to even if you later realize that that direction is not really what you're supposed to work towards. If you hadn't disciplined yourself to work towards it, you don't even know that the direction was wrong. But you picking a direction at the beginning and not this, like, okay, you pick the direction, but you don't have a discipline to work towards it. Even if the direction is right, you may end up not achieving what you want to achieve. But for you to pick, for you to be disciplined right from the beginning, you can easily switch the direction. Okay, thank you. Okay, so since so Jimmy says, I believe when you are disciplined, it's easy to discern which direction is right. Mm. Okay. Okay. Nora. Okay, I also choose um discipline. And that's because I feel when you're disciplined, it gives you the ability to distinguish between uh the right and the wrong direction. How? Um when we're talking about discernment, it talks about the ability to distinguish between two things or two of them. 
So if you're disciplined, like for example, when we talk about finance, you're you're being you're disciplining yourself in the aspect of finance. It now gives you the discretion. How do you go about your spending? And then it points out the right things or the things you should spend your money on. That's my take. Mm, okay. So let me let me let me hold on to that. This is going to be very interesting. Um, if we chose discernment, why do you think discernment should come first? Because if you have discernment, but you are not, you know, disciplined, and you're not really moving in the direction. Maybe yeah, discernment and direction may go hand in hand, but you're not disciplined. What's the essence of the discernment if you're not disciplined and you're not moving in that right direction or at the pace that is required for the direction? People that choose discernment, please, let's engage. Okay, uh, I think discernment is still like vital as the first part because with it comes understanding. You first off have to understand what you want, what's the what's the purpose behind it, and then that would guide your um, decision making, and would also like give you reasons why you need to be disciplined in achieving what you intend to do. So unless one doesn't have a proper um, understanding of something and the, the ability to like weigh their choices to judge well, which is discernment, the person might not like, the person might think they have a sense of direction in what they're doing when in actual fact it doesn't, it doesn't apply at the time to the person. And um, it might not also serve as a strong point of um, discipline. That's if a person is not fully discerning on something for me. That's what I understand by it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Direction. Why do you think that you need to have direction without discernment and discipline? Why do you think direction needs to come first? You think that, okay, if I'm in the right direction, I'm good, at least as the first step. Don't you um, think that sometimes discipline would play a more important role or you would even need discernment to be able to figure out the right direction? I'll say I, I chose direction because like you said, discernment and direction, they kind of work hand in hand. So I would have picked it to start for And why would I say that? It's mainly because I feel, to me, I feel discipline is more of like a psychological thing. So it doesn't just come to you unless you it has a backing. So it has something that has invited it to you. So mm-hmm. I, why am I disciplined? It's because I'm seeing where I'm headed. It's because I'm seeing a direction. I'm seeing the end goal. So I'm disciplined. And sometimes discipline as well is not so, just like you mentioned about the portions. So you can be disciplined today and tomorrow you are a lackluster or you know you don't feel up to it. So a lot of times to really be disciplined or to, uh, to be motivated, you need to be envisioning the end goal which is your direction you need to sort out the direction and sometimes just like was it Musa or someone said sometimes the direction even though you know that this is direction sometimes it's not right that you learn from it but at, but still you still need to have a direction which would help with the discipline and mm-hmm. that's when the examine comes in to be able to know which one is right or wrong so that even go even though you eventually find your discipline so, and you know your direction, you can still decide that, okay, I'm not going towards the direction anymore. I can see now that this is wrong for me and I'm headed towards the another direction. So that's why I feel like the first thing is direction, discipline, and probably then choosing right or left. At least you've learned something from it. Mm. I think, I, think I also agree with, I also agree with Yusuf here. 
because on the streets there's this saying that that goes um any which way is a way like any direction you want to take is still a direction that you take at the end of the day and i feel like if some in some cases some of the some of the directions you take in life would not be driven by your ability to judge you know the end goal properly but if you've taken that direction just be disciplined to you know to stick to it but in that mm-hmm. process you have to be making decisions which is where discernment come through you know so mm-hmm. if you if you're on a journey already be disciplined to stay on that journey but during that journey you will face challenges and when those challenges come be critical enough and have that discernment to be able to choose between okay cool this is the right path for me this is not the right path for me so i kind of agree with you with that thank you thank you Jay. and then um Khadija says here she says that I think once someone knows the direction you're heading to, you always, you always, you always, you always discipline yourself towards that direction. And Abdul Khalid says, the analysis makes me understand that we go hand in hand and they're all important. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm very excited about the fact that, you know, we're paying attention and all our arguments actually make sense like there is nobody that is wrong <laughs> in this situation different perspectives and you know one interesting thing about this is that everybody has their own number one number two number three depending on the course of your life although i agree with yusuf i agree with I- is with everybody but every single person has their own tailor-made way of working when i came up with these three d's i came up with it at a very low point in my life and and these were the questions that i asked myself i was like okay which way do i go um if i go this way I'm on my job. This is the right way for me to go. I need discernment. I need some form of validation that this is the right direction. I also, excuse me, I also asked myself, I said, okay, with these two directions, which is a very, very, very important question that everybody must ask themselves, especially when it comes to goal setting or you want to achieve something. Am I disciplined enough? Am I disciplined enough to do the work that is required to achieve the goals that I want to achieve? If your answer is no, then you cannot leverage your challenges for 360 success. Maybe I'll take it again. If you ask yourself, am I disciplined enough to do the work that is required to take me to where I need to go? If the answer is no, you cannot be disciplined enough to do that work. You cannot leverage the challenges that you will face for 360 success. You cannot. Maybe you move in a different direction. Yeah, that can help. Even with discernment, at that point, it cannot help you. Knowing that, okay, um, let's say you even have the validation that okay this is the right thing to do you have your clear direction this is where i'm going to but if you cannot do that work the challenges that you will face will become so problematic that you cannot turn them around for success before before the end of this session i'll I'll share one of my own personal stories i don't think many people know this but i'll share it's very 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 important for people to know that. So then, the role of people in leveraging your challenges for success cannot be over or underestimated. It's very, very key. You see, no man is an island, and I'm sure that we've all heard that so many times that it's cliche, but in the application of that saying, there comes a lot of work. You have to network with people. 
you need to engage people you need to ask questions if we go back let's go back to discipline discernment and direction do you know that there are some times when you need to get direction on something but because another person but because another person has already seen the end result of that thing you'll be able to learn from their own mistakes about what it took to go like that direction that you want to go to you learn what the journey entails and what it took to get to that level and what they need to be able to achieve that success or get to you know wherever they are going to the process you learn about it from people without you having to go through it yourself let's say you need discernment you're not really sure xyz then you have to seek wise counsel from people that are knowledgeable or are blessed with wisdom then you're asking yourself discipline do you have an accountability partner someone that can help you you know someone that can hold your hand in yusuf's book and journey to being a great student i know that i read there that you know, he said it that when you want to you have a goal you need to achieve success you need to do xyz you need accountability the essence, the, the importance of people cannot be underestimated. It cannot be overemphasized. Having the right kind of people with the right type of mindsets around you. People that, okay, let's say you are studying or maybe when you wake up, you're saying, uh, I, I want to go for one party. And the person reminding you, auntie, uncle, the work that you said that you were going to do and submit, at 12 o'clock, this is one o'clock, you've not done this, you say you want to go for party. Uncle, the money you say you are going to pay, you're not, you have, you've not paid it yet, you want to go and do charity work, you know, all those kind of things. Or people that would say, ah, so I see that you've been working so hard a lot. I just thought to compensate you with this two million naira and hopefully it can make your life better or at least just just easy to, to enjoy yourself just easy to 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 have fun yeah the money is not going to drop from heaven you need you need such and such people around you the value of your network cannot be underestimated and it also cannot be overestimated you always need people in your life what is 360? We've been talking about 360 success, 360 success. After this, I'm going to um, put off my presentation and we're just going to have a conversation to close this. Um, what is 360 success? I'm talking about your health, I'm talking about money, I'm talking about your mind, intellect, your mental health, I'm talking about your spiritual life, I'm talking about your personal and social life talking about family, we're talking about work, and all the other things that fall in between all of this, from the Zig Ziglar's will of, will of life. Can I ask everyone a personal question here? I think I'll be the first to answer. And you see, um, out of all these aspects, which one do you feel most proud of today? For me, I would say my health. Okay, let me hear from every other person. What you, which one do you feel most proud of? It's just one. There's no and and just one. So there's health, money, mind and intellect, spiritual life, personal and social life, family life, and work life. Health, okay, Khadija. I'll probably say, oh, there's no aunt. <laughs> no aunt, just one. You just have to pick one. Yeah, that'll be my health as well. Health, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Yusuf. Abdukali says health. Musa says health. Okay.
Please, who is, uh, who is choosing money? You should let me know. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm waiting for the person that is choosing money. <laughs> uh, so that I can send my account details. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> money, not because I have too much, but because I'm content in the process. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. I love the response. I love. I like the way you have already shielded us from being able to ask for <laughs> send you our account number <laughs> because you have too much. Mm. <laughs> like that. Okay, so this really says spiritual success. Uh, another person has said money. Who's that really? I'm saying money really. Good. I thought, okay. I thought Dr. Yusuf was too funny. Really. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Yusuf. <laughs> it's like they want to expose you. <laughs> yeah. Wow, spiritual life. I like that. I love that. Nice. So, uh, two most, uh, okay, so we had three major responses. That's health, money, and spiritual life. So, what happens to mind and intellect? What happened to personal and social life? What happened to work life? What happened to family life? You know, but health is wealth. Money and health are almost the same. When you have health, you can then make money because the person that is not alive cannot make money cannot do anything person that is on a sick bed there's so little that you know that person can do spiritual life is also very key when you're in tune with your your source you're in tune with your creator you know all these other things kind of you kind of have a way to just jump with them and then have a balance it's very very yeah, interesting now i want to touch on the ones that most people do not talk about and also we still talk about the ones that would be we chose so in leveraging your challenges for success when you say you have money problems or let me let me let me even come from a different angle this time around when you say you have money right or you have enough money not too much so that we can ask for your account number okay you say you have money do you have peace of mind are you breaking your back you know destroying your work life balance to be able to get this money such that it is indirectly affecting your health you're not paying attention to your family, your personal and social life. Maybe your house is just so dirty. You don't remember when you laid your bed on your, you, you don't even have anybody to help you clean up your mess. And you're not seeing your friends and you don't even have time to pray. And your mindset is a wreck all because you are trying to balance work life and money. Is that the case? For some people, that might be the case. Let me go to spiritual life. Is your spiritual life so good that you are now saying, oh, because you just have to be God morning, afternoon, night, you are fasting, you are praying, you are doing everything such that when it's time to actually walk, you are not walking. Hmm. Time to meet up with family, you are fighting with family. You are fasting, you are not replenishing your health. Mm. You are believing, you are praying two for seven the time you are supposed to use to work and earn money. <laughs> not doing that. Mm. Your spiritual life is also affecting your mindset and your intellect. You can't even interact with people even within your social space. Could that be a challenge? Are there people that are, you know, going through such situations right now? The answer is yes. Yeah. Are there people that have health problems? that they have to stop work, stop earning. The health is directly proportional to dwindling 
poor health is directly proportional to dwindling um, um, mental health, you know, mind and intellect in mm -hmm. most cases. And then in some rare cases, we see people that still push through and are still able to, you know, despite whatever health challenges they are facing, they are still able to achieve whatever goal that they want to eventually. But it is always, always, you know, in line with, you know, poor health. Is your health also making you lose your faith in your spiritual life and making you feel hopeless? Is your health stopping you from engaging in normal daily activities and, you know, stopping you from engaging with people within your social circle? Your work life is already suffering. Your family is probably giving their all to make sure that you're in, in good health. Are there people within this space and capacity? The answer is yes. As we, I think I've already touched on work and money together. Then family life. Are you always there for your family such that when it's time to meet with other people from people that can improve your life network, you say, oh no, we have a family function. We are going to, you're, you're about to say Jagodi today. You know, I'm going to Jagodi today. Other people will say, ah, no, I'm traveling home to Kano for, for the holidays. I'm not staying in Abuja or coming to Lagos where you can actually meet certain people that can change your life. Or you go to Kano, you stay indoors all day watching TV in your comfort zone, and then you do not go to business meetings. You don't even go to where they are playing polo. You don't do anything like that, where you can meet and network with people and actually get access to the right opportunities. I'm not saying that opportunities cannot exist within the family um, um, space and environment or ecosystem, but, you know, are there people that are facing some of all these challenges? The answer is yes. <laughs> Nora said, but was every angle. <laughs> oh God. Then it's true. Let me go to so, I, sorry. I said it's true because I know at least someone that is <laughs> exactly <laughs> in either one of everything you mentioned. Exactly. <laughs> something must suffer. <laughs> yeah, something must suffer. And then is it that you know you are so obsessed with that? My clothes must look fine. I must wear the latest. And eh? does it match? Everything is good. That party is happening. Why did they not invite me? I must be there. Hey, social life on. <laughs> has to be on flick. There's a new trend on TikTok. I must do it. Meanwhile, you have not opened your Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you finish with your TikTok life, you are probably soaking or soaking Gary because no money. The only money you have you used to pay for data. Or your health, you have been ignoring it all the while because you know <laughs> you only live once, it's yellow. And you are smiling to people on social media, but your family, you're not engaging with them. They don't even get to see your face. And at work, maybe you are the weakest link. And people already know that you know, maybe you're probably getting queries every week and stuff like that. Are you that kind of person? We will have people that have all those kind of challenges. The answer also is yes, right? And then this one, very, very important, mind and intellect. Do you find it difficult? Because this is also talking about health in, in, in an aspect in a way. Right? Do you find it difficult to achieve certain things? Do you find it difficult to follow through some certain tasks and then, or you, you have depression or anxiety or one of these um, um, defects, right? One of these disabilities, and you're not really taking time for yourself. You're not really taking time to know yourself and understand what works for you. But if you don't care about the anxiety, you still go and stay in a job that gives you high anxiety and then they give you the money, and then the money means nothing to you because your health, your mental health is suffering. Now your organs are not functioning well. Your family cannot talk to you, cannot talk to them because it's because of your 
you feel like it's because of your zodiac sign. The zodiac sign that is the cause of the way you that's how I am. I cannot change. <laughs> then you cannot talk to God to really have a conversation with your creator and help you solve some of the challenges that you're having. Or even your mindset is even affecting your spiritual life that you feel like you cannot pray. Some people are atheists. They don't even believe in God at all. They don't even have anything as related to spiritual life. Could it be that it's from their mindset or is it that they are right? Or what, what, what really is the, is the situation? Their mindset to make them go to a party or a social gathering and start doing maybe sometimes all sorts of atrocities or not relate with anybody or just go and sit down in one corner and say i'm an introvert that likes to be in extroverted circumstances it's a problem you know these are these are issues that we see every single day these are 360 and everything that happens in between is part of what you know we are looking at today as what are the challenges right and how can you leverage your challenges for overall success now when i was getting into kpmg for the second time <clears throat> i remember having a conversation with someone and the person was like you know how the system is you know how engaging it is i was like yes 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 yes, yes i know i'm like work life balance i said yes Person, i said do you know that This is balanced. 8020. Do you guys agree that it's balanced? 8020. Is it not 100? It's 100% 100 now. It's balanced. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. 100% is balanced. Person asked me that question. I was like thinking that, yes, truly. Uh, is balanced so my work will be 80 percent and then all the other ones i will just be struggling with 20 percent but guess what in life you cannot take that approach you can't take that approach and that is why it is very very much important for you to evaluate your three g's for you at every point in time these are the three g's for those that join late discipline discernment and direction and every point in time you always know how to compartmentalize documents challenge compete learn apply and celebrate at every challenge that you face in life documenting is key when you have challenges you ask yourself okay with help where and and this 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 is really the discipline that we're talking about as you need to help the actors of what is the current level of my health? What is my capacity? What can I do? What can I achieve? With this health, some people do not have um, health insurance. A lot of um, Nigerian business owners, startup founders, or even you know people that are just on their own freelancers, they do not have health insurance. And then when they have a health challenge, they find themselves going to the hospital to go and pay you know, out of pocket. Some people do not have health insurance. So you're out of your money, your allocation. You're saying, okay, in a year, if I'm going to take 200,000 and fix it such that I'm going to have access to good health whenever I need it. Some people that are used to health management organization have free access to gym with the whole health um, package. So they can go to the gym to maintain their health. <clears throat> Mind, intellect personal life and social life, I'm going to take those two together. What do I do to stimulate my mind? Sometimes I take my mathematics textbook from back then in school and just read it. Why? Because I want to stimulate my mind. I still want to be able to do X, Y, Z. I still want to be able to be sharp, you know? It might be Jerry, it might be whatever textbook that I have. I just take it and then like challenge myself that, okay, at the end of the day, like, yeah, can I still do this? And then when I solve the problem, I feel good. There are hormones in my body that just you know feel like yes, I have already achieved this. My endorphins, I feel like yes, the feeling of being able to achieve something, being able to do something that is good. Whenever I feel like um, 
I, I need to go out, socialize. Where am I going to? Am I just going to eat, 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 eat? Am I learning something new? Am I learning poetry? Am I learning how to paint? Am I meeting with people? When it comes to family, am I giving what is required? Family requires your rights, you know, respect, your time, being there for special and important occasions. Am I doing what is right? Am I taking out of my monthly stipend to be able to give my family what is required? If I'm so tight at the moment, what can I do to compensate? Some people will believe that, oh, okay, um, they have to give their family um, 500,000 every month so that the family can be okay, blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe that's what works for you. But what if you do not have enough money to give your family all of that and then you can't meet their needs? Introducing the concept of small and consistent acts. Small and consistent acts are acts that, you know, for instance, let me give you an example. Maybe you're always used to buying apples. Apples, apples, apples. But you always know that every week you buy those apples and then they come at a percentage cost of, they come at a percentage of the cost of what you plan to spend. You can consistently take yourself out. Everybody will start looking forward to the apples that you are bringing. It will be appreciated. At work, give on to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. When is your break time? Are you still working? Are you one of those people that carry their laptops and will be eating and be working at the same time? I learned something from some people. When it's work time, they are on Netflix and watching whatever it is that they want. That's their own break time as they are eating they are also catching up on maybe their favorite series and everything so that by the time they get back to work they are refreshed they get to work early they leave at the right time they are not spending more than the required time they know how to push back and negotiate because at the end of the day it's just one life and 24 hours that you have <clears throat> with your um spiritual life how are you managing it? If you're a Muslim that is expected to pray five times a day, are you praying at the right time? Or are you postponing it such that it will affect your mind and intellect and then you now be managing everything and then you're not praying at maybe like 12 o'clock, 1.30, you don't have enough sleep, then your health is already um, 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 challenged. Or your spiritual life as a Christian, you go, you went to video yesterday, you did your video, you woke up, you went to the office, you fasted, you did not eat, you're going on like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. How do you, how do you expect it to, how do you expect to balance everything at the end of the day? How do you want to get that discernment that you're looking for when you are caught, this is us, to cut, you know, the rope and connection line between yourself and your creator? So between all of this, I think the major key thing here is introspection introspection to see okay this is me this is what works for me and at the end of the day i want to be able to say um with my life generally i've been able to achieve x y z but how am i going to achieve it so with maybe the challenges that you have at work how are you leveraging it because challenges at work can also affect other areas of your life maybe your mind and intellect <clears throat> are you praying about it? Are you looking for a career mentor? Are you looking for a career sponsor? When you need, when work is becoming too problematic, are you looking for another job? If you do not know another job, you don't know how to get, are you socializing at least to get your mind off things? Or even networking to get yourself, you know, another type of opportunity or get, to, get yourself into a new career space? With family, are you causing you so much problems that you are unable to block it and say, okay, you know what, this is what I'm going to allocate? With your health, are you taking it for granted? And you know, when you take your health for granted, it shows up in other ways. And unannounced, unexpectedly, to just come like a thief in the night and just take what you need, rest, and then you'll not be able to do anything. And then you see that the time that you've allocated for achieving your goals, you see that the time is wasting. So I believe that it's very, very um, important. I said I was going to 
share an important uh, a personal story that many people know about. So when I was in secondary school, my science teacher, because I used to fail chemistry a lot, my science teacher told me, oh, you can never make it in the world of science. I don't even bother. This one, this one, that one. And I found that she passed away last year, which was very sad. Um, but guess what? I went to university. Yusuf, can you tell them I, what did I study in school? Yusuf. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> biochemistry. What do you mean biochemistry or something? Industrial, industrial chemistry. Industrial chemistry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I went ahead to study in school. So that's my own challenge because I leverage what I thought was my weakness at that point. And then I took it and then went ahead to study industrial chemistry. And I'm so glad that I did that. Why? Because let me tell you, even though at that time it wasn't so clear to me that this was the path that I was on, I saw in industrial chemistry with the mindset that I would have knowledge about converting raw materials into finished products. Now, going ahead to learn about different aspects of business, I set out to say, okay, I'm probably heading on to be an industrialist. Who is an industrialist? Somebody that you know, is in the manufacturing space and produces and does all of this. Thing. Don't be surprised if tomorrow now you hear about me and all this, my bio that Yusuf is reading, everything has disappeared and then they are just saying, I've already manufactured this, I've done that, because maybe that might be the end goal, you know, but mm -hmm. learning how to take away from, you know, re re detach yourself from the challenges that you are facing and see how you can turn it around is very, very key. So some people might be asking how and why did I study industrial chemistry? Let me start with the how, because this is a subject that I was having challenges with. Even in class, she told me that, ah, Come and sit down in front so that nobody will teach you. And then you'll not mistakenly get extra mark because I know you are going to fail. You know, <laughs> that was very terrible <laughs> in school, secondary school, to be to be going through that kind of thing. I just told myself only that ah, this chemistry stuff was even inside. I'm physics, I don't like physics, and I'm not feeling physics. I like chemistry. Why am I not passing it? I had to develop a new interest in this thing that was giving my life help instead of just leaving it and running away from it. In some cases, you might have to leave it and run away from it. If it's not working for you, you know, and that's why I'm always saying that you need to know yourself and in the learning and application, you ask yourself that, okay, this new knowledge that I have, does it work for me? Mm. And in what situation does it work? You have different cards, you pull the cards out and say, okay, um, this card maybe is the diamond card or the heart card or the joker or the ace of spades. Which one do I think out at every point in time? How do I win this game? When they say life is a game, that's what they meant. That is exactly what they meant. You'll be given different cards in life. You need to be able to know which one to play and when and you cannot know how to play or win at that game if you do not know how to play the game one two if you do not know yourself so guys i hope that i've been able to expose our minds to different perspectives about how we can possibly leverage the current challenges that we are facing right now in order to achieve success in our lives, whether it's health, whether money, you know, you need to pay your rent or family life or whatever aspect it is. I hope you've already learned a few things, few models that you can use and apply that would be tailor-made specifically for you. I can't come here and tell you the right answer or say, oh, this is the one stop, you know, solution to solving all of your life problems then i'll be lying to you or i'll be sharing what i know to be true with you but it might not actually work for you if you apply it i hope i've been able to share um wealth of my knowledge and i've also learned from you 
as well. It's been very interesting and engaging session, seeing that everybody has been intellectually yoked with you know, topics that we've been discussing. Yeah, so I hope that it's been an interesting session. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much, Fatima. This was a, this was a really nice session, actually. And I, I, I've, been, I've been writing a lot down anyway, so it's been, and I like the fact that everyone shared, you know, what they thought about, you know, leveraging your challenges, which is great. I put a couple of things down as well. And the last part was the most interesting one to me about the 360. And you could already tell where you are lacking. You could already tell that, okay, these are the areas that I actually need to work more on. Because a lot of times you see, once you start working full time, you see that, you know, you are putting too much effort into your work, you know, trying to impress your bosses, but you are not putting that not, not much time into your family. You are not putting time to, you know, social life. You are not putting time into even developing yourself mentally because you know a lot of times i've spoken to people and they be like book me and book we don't even me i just want to make money and then you know the money aspect as well when you chase money too much and then you are leaving your health behind i tell a lot of old people especially in the uk is i'm more inclined to chase money in the uk considering the bills you know you just want to chase that money and you know by the end of the day what are you you have to think about what you are sacrificing to get that money. And which is why I tell my uh, my fiance and I tell her that a lot of times I just tell I tell them they're not coming to work today, that I can't come um, to work on a Saturday. If I'm coming to work on a Saturday, I'm not coming uh, maybe on Monday or whatever. I need two days at least for myself. I need personal, I need for my personal development, you know, I need to do other things as well. Even if it's even if it's sleeping or watching as well, spending time with my family, I need that those two days for myself. And you know, just you sharing this makes me feel like it's actually validated. So thank you so much for talking about it. I know a lot of if uh I know we have a couple of questions and a lot of people want to comment as well. So I won't take too much of our time. So is there anyone that wants to ask a question or comment or you know, while Miss Fatima, the opportunity is here while Miss Fatima is here with all about. And uh, she's even still thinking she wants to add more to it. She wants to go into another venture. So, you know, just like Kali said one time, you know, success is not, is not the, it's kind of like a journey. It's not, uh, there's, it's not the end point. So, you know, success is still about finding yourself, you know, and for that developing yourself. So uh, do we have any other questions? Thanks so much, Fatima. It was a really great Thank session. You. Thank you. Okay, I have a question. Okay. Uh, my first question would be, you know, like they always say, success is a journey, and we all have a place where we get to in our career whereby we think that we've gotten there until you meet someone, probably your your peer group, who has actually also achieved more. That's the fact that you had the same time, you had the same years in life. So the question is to you, I'm sure you would have met probably people like that, that that's why everything you feel you have done, you've achieved sleepless night and everything. And then you still meet someone that still gives you like this threatening, ah, I've done this, I've done that. How do you manage those kind of feelings, that kind of situation in such a way that it doesn't push you overboard to now start, oh, I need to like push myself, I need to over, start overdoing things. Yeah, that's my question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for that interesting question. Okay, so to answer this, um, I feel like, you know, I said earlier, life is a journey and everybody's journey is different. Truly, there are some people that I look at tomorrow and like, ah, see, oh, these people have achieved all of these things. And these are some of the things that I want to be able to achieve myself. You know, I then look at it and say, okay, these people, they've not achieved X, Y, Z that they have achieved. They are also aspiring to achieve all these things that I've already achieved. So why stress myself unnecessarily? That's where the um, aspect of value exchange comes in. You go ahead and meet the person. Hey, I saw that you've achieved X, Y, Z. Ah, how did you do it? You know, it's not now from the point of view that you're allowing it to give you a headache. 
you've seen that this person has done it. This person has been able to achieve what you are hoping to achieve. And then you go ahead and ask the person, I see that you've already achieved X, Y, Z. How did you do it? How did you access maybe funding to be able to get your startup to this level? You know, there are some people that they would, even if you go and meet them and ask them, they would not really share with you. There are also those kind of people. There are some people that they will act like, oh, they don't know you. Who is this one talking to me? Blah, 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 and all of those things. There are also people like that. But then at the end of the day, you have to just look at it from the point of view of this is what I want. This is what I've achieved. Taking stock, documenting, this is what I've achieved. This is what I want. This person has done it. Can I learn from this person? Can this person teach me the skills that I need to be able to do X, Y, Z? Now, engaging all those people and asking questions, sometimes you'll find out that, oh, part of something or some of the things that you also have, they are also looking um, to be able to achieve some of those things. For instance, you might have a friend. I'm going to use the example of, an example of two ladies. Two ladies, one of them is very successful in career, and then the other one is well, not so successful but has a family, has two children, has a husband and everything. The other one is maybe lonely and, you know, is just pushing career and has money and all of those things. Obviously, the woman that wants to have, that has a career that is also looking to settle down would be aspiring to what the other lady has. The other lady that has family will also be aspiring to the career success that, you know, the, the career woman has. Exchanging knowledge exchanging value within our network within our people having the right set of people amongst us in our circle those are the things that actually help us surmount you know all those kind of situations now the lady can uh, that is married can give the girl tips oh this is your clothes that every time you're always wearing a uh, suit and jacket why not try wearing a gown to this event today maybe somebody you see somebody that will toast you there maybe somebody will actually toast the person Maybe the lady that is very much career inclined will see an opportunity that would, you know, even be relevant for the person that has children and everything. That is a remote job, but even pays very well. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it's it's a remote job for a software developer and development that is a development um, company or something that you pay in dollars or whatever, and they can connect you to that person. So that value exchange is always very, very key. I hope I was able to answer the question. Yes, you also just brings me to the point where I, I think we as um, mentors, motivational speakers should not just share our success story, but should also share the challenges, our weaknesses at those times while we are climbing the ladder. Because many people just share their success stories and they don't really tell us what were their challenges, how did they feel that it's okay to feel down, it's okay to feel you are not, you are at some point to feel like you're not good enough. So it just brings me to the point where we all need to acknowledge the fact that we don't yeah. share those things enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very important for us to be vulnerable, but Knowing where and where to be vulnerable is also very key because some people cannot wait to use your story against you. But at the same time, once you have the right platform, you have a safe space. I mean, there's a lot to learn in vulnerability. Thank you. Any other question? Anyone? Um, I think Sarah, you wanted to ask me a question as related to global shippers. I don't know if she's still here. Where is she? Oh, she's not here. Okay. So, is there any other question before we let Miss Fatima go? Any question you want to engage? Um, Yusuf, let me use this opportunity to tell everyone about um, <laughs> Nora. I was mind reading you. Okay, that's Jimmy. <laughs> okay, so um, let me just use this opportunity to tell everyone 
um, about my Ultra Life Boost platform. So I think that most times um, the world always prepares people for teenage life, puberty and everything, but there's something they don't prepare us for and that's our quarter life. Now that leads us to ending up in a quarter life crisis. Why? Because even the people before us are supposed to teach and prepare, they didn't really know how to navigate that and then ended up in, you know, perhaps a midlife crisis. You see a lot of elderly people that are going through all of those challenges. This is why conversations like this are very much important for us to have. So through Ultra Life Boost, I am able to engage young professionals and help them navigate their quarter life crisis along the entire 360 landscape of what their life um, purpose is and how to really much, um, really, really balance um, much of it. So. If you follow my Instagram at Ultra Life Boost, you can see, um, you can follow right now uh, if you'd like within the next can couple of. Can you put it on the chat? Uh, can you put it in the chat section, please? Ultra Life. Ultra Life Boost. I'm also, um, I also just launched a product that's like an affirmation card, not your typical affirmation card. This affirmation card has glass books inside is that you wake you up from wherever you are uh, maybe you are thinking of slipping back into your old ways you're thinking of giving up on life i also just launched that it's called 30 shots by ultra life boost so you can check it out and um, engage and um, buy or pre-order or whatever i'm also happy to engage anyone that reaches out do you have any challenges i able to hold sessions with you I only have I only give people the opportunity for one session. If after you have a full session with me and then you still have the same challenges, I would not just accept your money to bring you on board for another session unless I've evaluated the reason why you know you did not even make any progress in the first session. Now, if that reason is because of you know maybe your lack of diaspora behavior or your indiscipline or on seriousness with your life or anything like that, I would not take you up for another session unless I can see that you really need the help and support um, um, you need. So far, I've um, had a consultancy with about 35 young professionals, yeah, cumulatively between maybe like three, four years now. And all of them are doing well. Some of them are working in Barclays Bank, JP Morgan Chase, KPMG, PwC. Some of them own startups and businesses. So please feel free to reach out if you're having any of these challenges that you cannot discuss um, over the this Zoom chat. And then I'll be able to reach out and I'll be able to help you. Thank you. Fantastic. I see. Seems like I'll need that as well. So I'll definitely <laughs> sign up. <laughs> so guys, she, she has put the uh, Instagram handle on the, the, in the chat section. So ultra live post. So make sure you check it out and, you know, at least try one session, see how it goes, you know, because we are, as she has mentioned, like we have so many things we need to, Take care of. We need to take care of our health. We need to take care of work life, social life, family. If one is lacking, then we are not really living life. We are just surviving, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. have a look at it and then see if um, you. I'm sure you definitely benefit from it. So, is there any more comment? Any more uh, question? We've already spent two hours of this Fatima's uh, time. Yeah. So, thank you so much. Thank you. My, so it was so good. The session was so good. I didn't even know it was two hours already. So <laughs> I was just enjoying the session. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for today. Um, in the access, okay. Uh, read on. Okay, read on. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't going to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. Read on. No, no, no. no. Okay, you can go ahead. So that you're dishing out knowledge with this cool and calm look, with no pressure, and she was dishing out very vital information. It's so nice to be in that space. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, thank you, Dr. Jumi. So part of the comments I was going to make, and then uh, maybe next time we'll need you to do the intro and not yourself. So still didn't do justice. <laughs> right. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. All right. Uh, so Fatima, thank you for the session. It was it was good. Um, and there were there were lots of learning points that I'm taking away from this session. So what I just wanted to do is uh, the feedback and um, of course a question as well. Okay. So uh, uh, for me, I put a lot of pressure on myself uh, in terms of. Yeah, I want to be at a certain age and what I want to achieve. Some of them, I think a lot have been able to achieve, but of course, some of them are still in the pipeline. Then um, I have also you know, quite a number of ideas and then I work full time and uh, my work takes me, takes almost all my ideas, sometimes weekends. So my challenge is to balance my aspirations with my time. Right, so there are lots of things to do. And there were two things that I thought of doing three, four years ago, and I've seen other people doing them and they are doing them well. So, uh, so from the car, it's not starting you know, at the time I thought about them because um, I've seen someone else doing them and it's working. And I fear that other things that I'm thinking about, somebody else is thinking about them as well. And then, you know, the, the race of, um, you know, first to market is, is important, you know. So, so it's quite a challenge for me, you know. Uh, I've gotten in touch with someone, you know, who is a mentor, and um, so far it's going well. But let me just let me just hear from you. How do you think I can manage it? Okay, thank you, Ridwan. I think that what you're going through is typically what um, every one of us goes through, especially the part where um, you think that somebody else is thinking what you're thinking. Perhaps maybe you have an idea or something. One thing I can say is that the best way, right, to the, the best way to, to overcome that is to take action. That is the best way to overcome it. And sometimes we may have perfectionist mindset to say, oh, I want things to be perfect so that I can do it well. It has to follow a due process or whatever. I've heard so many people say that, but you know what? Sometimes perfectionism, perfectionism kills dreams. You just have to start. That is what you have. Start wherever you have. And also leverage you know, time and season. There are so many people that have so many gifts. Maybe you launch this, you launch that. You also need to know, at this point in time, is this what is relevant? Do I need to stop this? Do I need to start this? If I'm starting this, for how long is it going to run? What's the sustainability plan for me to be able to achieve success and everything that I really want to do? So those having those kind of conversations with yourself is very, very um, key. Um, another thing that I would like to say is don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up at all. Personally, when I look at you, I see that, yes, you have achieved a lot of success, admire all your achievements and everything. So just from that point of view, to know that you are enough. And I'm not saying this as, oh, just a pat on the back or anything, because this is something that each and every person you know, should, should, should have at the back of their minds. And if you would allow me to respond to this question in this way, I, I, I'm happy to just slip it in. From a spiritual perspective, um, God has already created what everybody is going to eat. God has already created what um, even the ant that is under a rock is going to eat. So understanding that your provision is in the hands of God, and then when he gives you an idea, when he gives you something that you can use to maybe make other people's lives better, or maybe even increase your own um, means of income and everything why not go for it once you you know just have that clarity on what you're supposed to do you go for it the best way to overcome all these thoughts process is to take action that's one two your provision is already written it's already there so when it comes an opportunity you take it three you are enough you are enough and it's not the same to patch your back or do anything because at the end of the day we all 
have something that another person is looking forward to. You look at what another person has and then you decide to let that affect you, it's going to be wrecking when that person eventually leaves the face of this earth, maybe before you, and then you'd now be wondering, oh, so all the goals, all the everything, what was it for? And don't think you want to be in that kind of situation. I've been in that kind of situation before. I'm not saying that it's something that any human being is immune to, but it's just something that you have to constantly remind yourself to say, okay, you know what? I may not be where I want to be right now, but hey, look at all what um, I've achieved. So practicing a mindset of gratitude would actually help you to um, achieve more. I hope I've been able to answer your questions. Midwan, you're on mute if you're speaking. I cannot hear you. How's it? Okay. I was going to say yes. No, um, thank, thank, thank you very much, Fatima. Um, I need that. Can you hear me? Yeah, we yes, can hear you. Can hear you oh, okay, okay. Yes, yes. So thank, thank you. Okay. All right. I, I was going to say I, I totally agree as well. Because, uh, okay, it's still. Uh, I think it's the network. Yeah, let me see. Hold on. We can hear you read on. Okay. I think it's yeah. I totally agree, and I I, I also use one. I don't know, but I feel because at the end of the day, the time is usually not enough. So I feel like I outsource a lot to because I feel like you can, if you feel you have someone that can, you know, help you with those ideas and personal goals faster. You know, you are working full time, you want to have time for your family, and you also want to achieve those things. You know, you can as well outsource because. You know, we see these successful people, these celebrities, they outsource a lot. People just come, yeah. they just come to say, they just come to give motivational speeches that we both have 24 hours, but no, we don't. <laughs> you, have, you have someone that plans your time, you have someone that does this yeah. for you, that does that for you, you outsource most of the things, and you just come out and say, we have 24 hours. No, we don't. So yeah. outsourcing is something I see Thank that you. we use a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that works. And, and people leverage family a lot for outsourcing. I have a friend now that works in the UK, but then decided mm -hmm. to come home and have like, you know, a farm and all of that. He doesn't, yeah. he has gone back to the UK to continue his work from when he came for holidays. And the sisters mm -hmm. that are managing it, he put a CCTV there and uh -huh. then go there almost every day to help him manage all of those things. So. Yeah, outsourcing, I think I must have forgotten to mention that point. So thank you so much, Yusuf. Outsourcing is actually very, very key. And it's not all the time that you have to use money to outsource. You can also leverage yeah. your friends and family. And maybe that's where you even know the people that really care about you because <laughs> you need help and you're reaching out. So yeah, that's it. Great. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for feedback. Very very lovely feedback. Yeah. Thank you, Ridwan. Then, uh, you were saying you didn't want to part me on my back. Please, part me on my back. Eh? I want <laughs> OK, I'm partying. You are enough, Ridwan. And you're doing super awesome and great. Please believe me. <laughs> Please believe me. Uh, guys, thank you. All right. All right, thank you so much, Fatima. Is there any last comment or question before we go? Anyone at all? We've spent two, one or two hours now, so just one more. We've still got Nora, Khalid, Khadija. Anything you want to share, guys, before we leave? Feel free to disagree as well. So please, I'm always here for intellectual conversations. Mm -hmm. It's always so. It's it's just a big challenge to really have all those things. It's really a big challenge. But you know, having it in mind, just like you said, that okay, you 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 can. Uh, what what did you say now? 
you can compartmentalize and you know having a framework to work with is it's it's really helpful. But if you just carry on with life as usual, you, you don't really know what you're losing out on. You don't know what you're sacrificing. Uh, thanks so much, Fatima, once again. It was a really insightful session. Uh, so we have uh, Dr. Jumi okay. last, we'll take her for the last comment. Okay. Well, I just wanted to keep in something. One thing I learned from today is that there's no script to talk to. I think we just all need to write our own thing. Sit down, yeah. right? Keep a green while on the way. Sometimes you have to tear the paper out and you know start over again. Just keep writing. Yeah. That's why you are writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my right. that's um, thank you. That's very true. Very, very true. Thank you. Considering you even finished from you finished with the uh, industrial chemistry with a degree from into in industrial chemistry and you moved straight to was it did you move straight into uh accounting auditing and the likes i started out with marketing as okay. an insurance yeah. company yeah and i okay. think insurance is one of the most difficult things to sell to nigerians because <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's tough everybody believes that god is their personal insurance you know so was so tough. how did you really yeah go on yeah, I mean, it was tough, and then I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and um, stick to this business thing. Uh, because, okay. you know, first of all, in Nigeria, you don't really have where you can develop your skills in, yeah. in sciences and everything. And I thought to myself that, okay, since I already knew what my plan was, my long-term plan, that okay. eventually I'll move into business. So... If business was already presenting itself now, when I say business, I mean business consulting, strategy, audit, you know, just understanding the um, commerce and um, finance and accounting landscape. So I was like, if it's presenting itself now, I better just go ahead and do it since yeah. I already have the technical um, knowledge and expertise. So yeah, wow. that was it for me. Wow, that's really nice. So. Uh, it's a good thing that a lot of our mentees are students, so they know that regardless of what you are studying at the moment, you can still write your own story, you can still have yeah. a successful, very successful career. It's just you yeah. can still make a decision to change direction at any point in your life. Anytime, yeah. Which is, which is one great thing that I've also picked up today. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so... Thank you so much, Fatima. I'm just, I just don't want you to go because I want to always go Thank you so much, you still. Thank you, everyone. I really enjoyed my time here. That's why I was able to even stretch beyond what we agreed. I love yeah. it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hopefully, we'll have you again to come back and talk to us. Hopefully. I'd be honored and happy to. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, you must have her again. Hopefully, you must have her again. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll definitely love to have you back again at the Sophia. So thank you so much for honoring us. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you guys for coming and staying this long. And we would have this recorded session up on the Topia anyway on the YouTube channel and then we'll share it to everyone. So thank you so much for today, guys. Have a lovely weekend. All right. Bye, Fatima. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yes, bye.